We're about to talk with a figure by the name of Unusual Whales. That's not his real name, he's a creature on the internet. A human being, of course. But his operation is designed to reveal to you what kinds of trades members of Congress make. They've got a lot of them, and he's the foremost analyst of exactly how it works and what you can learn about it. Given the nature of his reporting and the power of the people he's reporting on, Unusual Whales demanded complete and total anonymity. Hey there. Uh, you're quiet. Is this better? Yes, it is. Unusual Whales has amassed millions of followers on social media by tracking Congress's financial disclosures and posting what he finds online. I'm just a uh, nonpartisan, data-driven guy, but when I started making noise, no one cared, and then no one really cared until I released my 2020 report. And I basically said, like, how Congress had outperformed the markets. In finance, a whale is an individual or entity whose large-scale trades can influence prices in the market. You can actually see a common theme developing. And the theme is this, which is when there is crisis, some members uh, think it's best to act on their portfolios rather than solving the problems there within. Unusual Whales started tracking Congress's trades in 2020, when dozens of members dumped their holdings right before the pandemic crash. You can focus on the, the big people, but people, even people like Representative Susan Davis. She sold thousands of shares in Alaska Air and Royal Caribbean. These are, of course, companies that are going to be hit by COVID. Her trade was on February 11th. It was disclosed in, in the middle of March, once COVID had already wrecked the, the, the markets. Members of Congress often disclose trades related to companies, industries, and commodities they oversee in their committees. I mean, the war in Ukraine was kind of a very interesting time for trading. Uh, many members of Congress buying uh, oil or energy plays beforehand. Uh, some of them are, are, are on committees that have oversight over, over these things. You saw a bunch of uh, purchases in Intel, Moss. These are like potash and fertilizers and these, these ended up being beneficiaries to the Ukraine war. And you saw numerous Basically, numbers. Basically, uh, uh, precursors or ingredients for ammunition and military supplies, right? Precisely. You have a representative like Marjorie Taylor Greene saying war and rumors of war are incredibly pr profitable. She ends up buying a significant amount of Lockheed Martin, uh, of Chevron. All those, all those trades become immediately profitable once the war begins. You know, a lot of people always say that Congress is very good at stock buying. What people don't really talk about is how good Congress is at stock selling. We had Silicon Valley Bank, uh, First Republic kind of got saved, went to Chase. Uh, what kind of activity did you see around those events? A lot of members sold uh, a significant amount of stock. For example, Louis Frankel sold FRC, and then she bought JP Morgan that same day, or, or a few days after actually rather, and then is up now approximately 60% uh, uh, on, on that purchase. Got it coming and going. Yeah, exactly. His posts often go viral, like this one from September, showing Republican Tommy Tuberville up 20% on millions of dollars worth of agricultural futures. Unusual Wales points out that Senator Tuberville sits on the Senate Agriculture Committee, so he has the power to influence those prices with legislation. And then there's this one, when Democrat Josh Gottheimer, who serves on the Financial Services Committee, sold his shares in Silicon Valley Bank the day before it collapsed. And then, of course, you'll find hundreds of posts about the greatest congressional trader of all time, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi herself said uh, that she doesn't trade, um, which is, is true, it's all done in her husband's, in her husband's name. Unusual Whales cited numerous examples where the Pelosi's profited immensely as legislation worked its way through Congress. They received preferential shares in Visa while Congress was hammering out credit card legislation. Immediately before the pandemic, they invested in companies that specialized in video conference technology. And then there was the massive position the Pelosi's took in various companies while she was delaying negotiations on a pandemic relief bill with Donald Trump. All those bets paid off. In 2008, Nancy Pelosi's net worth is around 21 million, 22. By this time, in 2020, her net worth is approximately 250 million. In July 2022, amid public scrutiny of Pelosi's trades led by Unusual Whales, the Pelosi's sold 25,000 shares of the tech company NVIDIA at a massive loss. But she discloses a trade on the same day. That's the, the fastest disclosure ever in the history of US Congress. It's insane. She does this and she says she sold her NVIDIA position for a loss for approximately $300,000. The divestment cost them millions of dollars. And amazingly, last November, the Pelosi's reversed course. On uh, November 22nd, she buys approximately 50 uh, deep in the money call options on NVIDIA. 
Unlike traditional stocks, deep in the money calls allow Pelosi to make more capital efficient trades, essentially gambling more with less. The trade is done 20 minutes before close, while Congress is in session, mind you. What might the Pelosi's know that the public didn't? What happens after that, before her trades are disclosed? Well, President Xi of China visits California. Biden announces new U.S. semiconductor plans. Uh, and on December 11th, before it's disclosed, the U.S. Secretary uh, of, uh, of Commerce, uh, Raimondo, he says that NVIDIA could sell AI chips to China to comply with U.S. control experts. The rest is history. In 103 days, that position ends up gaining around 103%. So she's, she made you know, $2 million plus her original two, so $4 million total on this position. Pelosi's investments are so successful that investors now actively seek her financial disclosures, and her trades seem to move the market. And her net worth now in 2024 is probably around like 300 to $350 million. All right, so we're fresh from our interview with Unusual Whales. A lot of names got tossed around. Figured the only responsible thing to do is to start making some phone calls. So we reached out to a number of uh, representatives and senators who either uh, helped uh, advance legislation. Senator Tuberville not only get a decline, but a denial. Um, and also, uh, same deal from my insider trading. Your aides are coming. I came here with a goal to try to break the place. We can't even matter inside of our government uh, institution. 